This Talking Flutes podcast is kindly sponsored by Trevor James Flutes, making life sound beautiful. You can show them some flute love by following them on Instagram at TJ Flutes, Trevor James Flutes on Facebook, and at trevorjamesflutes.com. Hello, this is Talking Flutes, and I'm Claire Southworth, and I'm sitting in my kitchen in Hove with John Paul Wright. Hello, John Paul. Hello, hello, hello. It's me. <laughs> it's, so, not, it's not Drama Thursday. It's, it's not. No, it's Monday. It's Monday. It's Podcast Monday. It's Podcast Monday, and we haven't seen each other for a, a little while. No. Since before Christmas. We are coming up with some new ideas. It's a new year, new thoughts. Oh, trying to come up with new ideas, but... Should we start on the positive? Okay. What a great day this is today. Is it? It is. What number have we hit? What podcast number have we hit? Oh, my. Oh, my word, yes. <laughs> what have we hit? Number? We've hit 200. Yes, this 200. This is incredible. Because when we started, I never thought we'd get to 200. We wanted to get to 10, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, we just it was just a new idea, wasn't it? We thought, I mean, you came up with the idea of... Of, of doing something and you already did some video podcasts mm. and then we said well if we did some them more regularly and, and what would we call them so I remember I said well we're talking about flutes call it yeah. talking flutes and then suddenly it took off yeah and we got to 10 then we got to 50 and then we hit the magic 100 but oh who would have thought 200 four years later or over four years later it. It's crackers, isn't it? Yeah. All through lockdown, we kept on going. We did. And I have to say, though, there were a lot of benefits from the lockdown because we started to do interviews by Zoom. We did, yes. And so I could talk to people that I wouldn't have got to see, people in different countries mm -hmm. and from, you know, hundreds of miles away. And it was lovely. You could see them, you could chat to them, you could find all sorts of things. So uh, it's been a real benefit. But it's, it's hard, isn't it? Every 200, I was flicking back because at the moment I'm, I'm trying to build the re reference website because I, what I've noticed is that when people have come in and said, oh, I've just discovered Talking Flutes, there's 200 hours of podcasts to listen to. And it's a long way to sort of filter all the way back. So I'm trying to find a way in which we can put it up online in its own dedicated website that's going to be easier to navigate, either by person or by subject. We were talking as I came in to set this, this studio up in, in your lovely kitchen, is that you've got Wissam Bustanis. You, you did a long time ago. I think they're in the, I think in the 80s or 90s. So we've, got, I had, we've had 110 podcasts since. Since, yep. And you did two, and they're absolutely wonderful, for the love of music. And it's all about that word, love. And it was just such a wonderful podcast. But I don't We could know. replay that, though, John Paul. We could, we could put, put that back in in a few weeks' time. I think it's one that is timeless because that's Wissam. And it's, it just brings a different... It just brought a different side to... Different perspective. Yeah. To and there's of lots of stuff from that, but it's becoming harder, isn't it? When you get to 200, you think... Oh, I mean, you, you, before I came down, you said, um, what's the subject matter for, for the podcast today? And you said, well, actually... I don't know. Apart from being 200th podcast, and we'll talk about our giveaway later because, you know, we have to celebrate in our own little yeah. way, don't we? I think it's the first time I've come down without this huge list of fluty questions. Yeah. But I, your idea of, a, of a, some sort of index or, or contents yeah. page is excellent because our podcasts have been a mixture of things. Um, you've done lots of interviews, uh -huh. and I've done a mixture of interviews and Technical subjects, yes. so which are the, and some some brief interpretation ones as well, and I think that if someone wanted to sort of search for vibrato or or articulation mm -hmm. or French flute players or whatever it might be or study books, that then they could find that quite easily and have a listen because I don't think any of these pods are out of date. No, I think not, none of them are, I, yeah. from when I was looking back um, a few days ago, they're all relevant. They're all relevant still to now. Yeah, absolutely. And 
it's just when say two hundred is a lot, and it's take, say it's taken a long time to get to two hundred, and then you get to two hundred, and you, you look back through the content, and you think, okay, we can keep talking to lots of people because there's still lonely, so many flute players out there to talk to. Some are actually impossible to get get on the podcast, isn't it? Like our dear old friend Ian Clark, who's impossible to get on. <laughs> <laughs> There is lots, there's lots of people to talk about, but it's the subject matter now, isn't it? Because four years ago, I think when we started, it was quite a unique flute. I think we were sort of the first ones to really sort of push the flute the podcast thing. Well, a serious flute yes. podcast. That's what we were, wanted to be relevant for today's player, whether they were a really enthusiastic amateur or professional. Well, if you look on analytics, yes, because... When we used to be able to get streaming numbers, because you can't get streaming numbers now, you get download numbers. And when streaming numbers, I mean, we reached over a million in the first 18 months of doing this, a million streams. Now it's down on downloads only. But those are people that are physically downloading them to their devices. So instead of streaming it when, they're, when you're online, you're, you, you get a physical download number. So we are rapidly approaching 600,000 since the streaming numbers started. So, stop, sorry. So, they're good numbers. I think we get an average of uh, six, 7,000, sometimes 8,000 downloads a week that's per brilliant. episode. Well, that's it fantastic. is, because apparently if you get 400 a week, that's classes you're in the top 10% of podcasts. Wow. There's so many podcasts out there. So, we're obviously doing something right. Yeah, and of course, with the last couple of years, people have been at home more. They've been listening to more podcasts. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it, flute is a really good hobby for zillions of people. So we've been relevant. And it's how we stay relevant, Claire, isn't it? Because, say, the world's moved on. TikTok has sort of taken over the social media. And Are you suggesting that now? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I wouldn't dream of... Oh, no, I'd love to put myself doing some TikTok <laughs> stuff, but... <laughs> No, and obviously Instagram, the algorithms, yeah, we can talk about social media now, but Instagram is changing to try and be more like TikTok. So this world of sort of interaction in the last four years has changed. I mean, there's millions of podcasts. Yeah. And it's thinking, what can we do that is going to keep us relevant? Because it's pointless stopping and just rehashing. Let's rehash them as we go along. But what can we put in that is going to keep us... Of interest. Oh, that's the word. Interest. That's the yeah. word, yes. Saw you were struggling there. <laughs> so, <laughs> Unusually, yes. But, but maybe our listeners could, could help us out here. I think we need some help on this one. So anyone who's listening today, if you have some ideas of topics mm -hmm. uh, or interviews we could do, or if you feel you've got something of, of importance, not necessarily importance, but of relevance to say, and want to come on and chat to us as well. Yeah, you don't have to be a well-known flute player or flute Goodness teacher. Goodness me, no. It'd no. be nice to have a, a normal, what do I mean normal, a, 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 a regular flute teacher. A regular flute teacher, a regular flute player, an amateur who devotes all their time to, to playing flute when they're not yeah. working. It's, there's all sorts out there. We're very happy to chat to people. They are. And I might even be tempted to go into some cocktail bars and get slowly drunk with flute players if they're ever over in London and do a podcast <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> There's a thought. Oh. It used to be coffee, John Paul, and you've moved on to cocktails. And no, and well, never guess what, Pete. You've only got one dog here today. Um, yes, because um, my house has been a little bit busy over the last four months. We have. He's drinking now. Yeah, he's drinking now. You can hear that. <laughs> We've had five, five adults and four dogs living here. Good grief. We've now gone down to four adults and four dogs, with an impending baby. <laughs> and because it was so busy and I knew you were coming, I managed to organise a dog walker to take oh. three of the four. Now, Pete, of course, is he's 11 and, and a half, and he's, uh, he's getting on a bit, so he can't have too many energetic walks. But the others are out, and it's a lot, it's a lot, lot calmer. But the house has been busy. We have uh, Joe and his wife... Yes, how wonderful. Uh, ...living with us because they were trying to buy a flat and it all fell through, fell mm -hmm. through twice. Third one is just about ready to complete and wonderful. hopefully they move in a couple of weeks. And then the good news is you're going to be... And I'm, I don't want those eyes again. I was going to call you Granny, but you're going to be a... An Omar. 
Omar. Yeah, Omar, Opa. I don't like granny <laughs> or grandma. Not that I, I, the, the words are fine, but I don't feel like a granny or grandma, so I'm going to be an Omar. So right. it's all very exciting. Anyone that knows Claire knows that she can give you the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and when Claire gives the eyes, so never mention the G word to Claire. <laughs> I think you're going to be calling me Granny from now on, aren't you? I just know it. That's typical of me, isn't it? (laughs) But yeah, in our 60th year, what I wanted to do was come up with some things to do before you're 60. Well, you've missed it. You are 60. No, I'm not 60 till Oh, you're not 60 yet? Are you in your 60th year? year. Yes, yeah. Okay. So I'm trying to think of things to do before I'm 60. Like what? I don't know, I'm the foggiest. And that's the problem, isn't it? I bought myself a VR set yesterday, an Oculus 2. Um, What's a VR set? Virtual reality. Oh, thing. very, very fancy. It's fancy. It's absolutely wonderful and gives me great, gave me great joy for about 45 minutes yesterday. I said, let Pete out. He needs to go and do his business in the garden. So I was happily sat on it, wafting your hands around and just sort of. Playing games? Well, I wasn't. I was actually w- watching documentaries and sort of being under the ocean, sort of being able to look all around 360 and having that feeling. And then I started to feel a bit sick. And I took... Because I have motion sickness anyway at the best of times. Well, you better give it to me then. And uh, <laughs> so I took it off and I felt dreadful for hours. I was on for an hour. So I don't know whether that's going to be a full-time issue is that my sense of balance is just going to make me feel sick all the time. Hmm. So what, what else do you do with this uh, VR? Well, you can have virtual meetings. So I can meet up with people, like flute players, like yeah. who, who have the same machine. So, yeah. for example, Giovanni Perez, I, he has it. So we can meet in a virtual room and we have avatars and we can sit and have a chat. And Wow. I think you should buy me one of these gadgets and then we can, <laughs> we can have virtual chats. That'd be quite fun, but how would, you, how would you put it up on... I'm sure there must be some way we can stick it up online. I'll leave that with you. <laughs> uh, so uh, you, I would create an avatar that was probably six foot four, hench, lots of muscles. <laughs> <laughs> Good looking, probably about 35. <laughs> Rather than this little old grey man. <clears throat> Poor thing. And, and, OK, so other things for your 60th year. Do, are, are there any flute-related ones? <laughs> Would help, wouldn't it? Oh, my voice. Um, As we're on talking flutes. Yes, I keep forgetting sometimes. I thought we were having a little chat. Um, Yes, I am going to go to the NFA, I think. Which is where this year? Well, Chicago. It's the big one. The big 50th. I've been to Chicago for an NFA. It's lovely. Windy city. Yes, it's on the the big Hilton, on the the big strip place. And hopefully that'll still be going ahead because we're in different... The world's still in a weird place. You know, we're in the UK... This week are sort of coming out of everything. There's no restrictions, no more masks. We're just going to be living with it. And Yeah. I, I still wear a mask. Yes, and I still will wear a mask on the tube and on the trains. And I think we're used to wearing a mask, but the regulations, for some peculiar reason, are disappearing. So, so flute-related, um, no. Because I spend my life, just like you, with flutes. I would like to get my golf better but I'm getting frustrated because my son is so much better than me in fact both sons are better than me and it is however much you one doesn't one doesn't think it's it gets to you it does really so it's it, I'd love to get my golf better and no flutes probably not I spent I spend my life with them and sometimes it's just nice to put them down and try and do something different instead well, the answer to golf is like the answer to flute practice. That's all you have to do. It's harder than flute and practice. No, no, no. It's, it could be exactly the same. And the thing is, you need to practice in secret and then go and have a game with your sons and amaze them. <laughs> it's different. It's, I, I, OK, I've been playing the flute for, crikey, 50 years. 50? Oh, no, less than that. 40, 40 years. And... You pick it up and you honk in its vulgar form. You pick it up and you blow. But with golf, the slightest change in angle, sl- the slightest issue with the hand, and with my case, it's the left hand, just 
you may have had a good day the day before, and then the day after, it's absolutely awful. I know flute playing's the same, but no, golf, I think it's the hardest thing ever invented. I think it teaches you a lot about flute playing, though. Really? And flute practice. Yeah. Because it's, it's still, as we've said before, balance, rhythm and timing. Oh, yes. Yeah. And it's about practice and mm-hmm. control and keeping calm and having conscious practice so that you can subconsciously play. So a bit like, so talking about flute performance then, you, you practice with conscious thought. You, yep. When you practice, you think about all the elements that are involved, whether it's your tone or your technique or your articulation, and you're consciously thinking about those aspects of your playing and working at it. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when you think about it, it's a bit difficult to, to do it. It's a bit like vibrato. If you talk about vibrato, it's very difficult to play with it because it's a natural thing that becomes unnatural because you talk about it. But then, when you, if you practice well enough or hard enough, you get to the performance and then you can't be thinking about it. You can't be thinking about... Uh, things that you might be doing to, to control the sound or to change the sound. You have to do it more naturally because you're there just to play. So it's important just to go and play, but in your practice you're conscious about it and you think about it. Now, same as in golf. If you start thinking about your swing when you're, when you're in a game of golf, it goes wrong. Are you being bothered by that dog, John Paul? Well, um, he's... Pete's very, very... Friendly with John Paul at the moment. He yes. won't leave him alone. His tail's going and he's huffing and puffing and he's just saying, I haven't seen you for a long time. Where have you been? <laughs> <laughs> hiding, hiding. Yeah, I totally get it. And it's all about being in the moment. Um, but I just find it horrendously difficult. I should act as Are a... Are you talking ch- about flute now, golf? I, well, f- flute playing's horrendously difficult <laughs> if you start thinking about it. And we've had... We've, we've spoken about in previous podcasts, haven't we, about about preferences and perfection doesn't exist and uh, a performance from an amateur of the foray fantasy is just as valid as the performance from someone like Wib or Jimmy or Dennis Burikov or yourself or Paul Edmund Davis. Each performance is valid and I suppose the same is for golf. Each shot is valid. It's just it doesn't get you any closer to the goal, the hole, does it? Of course it does. <laughs> yeah, if you've been playing as long as you. But uh, I just want to probably chill a bit more. And uh, crikey, very thirsty, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get back to our um, oh, yeah, 200th. Yes, 200. Yes. Uh, podcast. So how are we going to celebrate? Ah, uh, well, I've just had a coffee, thank you. So, um, <laughs> no, I think we need to reward our long-suffering listeners, shouldn't we? I think we should. What do we give them? A bag of Haribo? I think we should give them a flute. <laughs> yeah, but they're all, they're all flute players. They'll all have flutes, won't they? Oh, yeah, you can't have too many flutes. And, you know, it's always good to have a second flute in case the first flute... <laughs> It doesn't behave itself. <laughs> yeah, I, I get that. Um, so let's think. What, what can we... So normally we get piccolos. We, we do giveaways with, on social media with piccolos because everybody wants a piccolo and lots of people don't have a good piccolo. And we do alto flutes. But, do you know, let's do something different. I'm, I'm, I'm going off on a tangent here. Is thing in, thing that you and I have big differences in is that uh, we play different mechanisms. You can play both. You can play the regular mechanism that we all play, which is open hole in line G with me. It's open hole in line G with B, B foot. Or you can play open hole offset with E mech or without E mech, B foot or C foot. But you play, we can play the, those, but you also play and have a preference for open G sharp. Yeah. And um, we make. And an open, an affordable open G sharp. And if I go back a few years, it was a di- in dialogue with you and our technical director David Farley that I totally switched off on, which was about <laughs> creating an affordable open G sharp flute because you can get them on most makers, but they are very expensive. And those that are on open G sharp just wanted to make it 
have a flute that was affordable for people to try. Yeah, and it is a superior system. Oh, I don't deny it. I don't deny that the system is superior. Yep. But it's 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 interesting because it won't take off until more people no. play it, and more people will play it when the flute's more accessible. And you've just made it more accessible because you're making one. So we we'll ought to maybe explain what open G sharp is. Yes, it's the original Bohem system mm-hmm. where more keys are sprung open. So we only have a D sharp key that's closed. But for me on an open G sharp flute, when I play after A, if I put my third finger down, I play G sharp or A flat. And if I put my little finger down, my pinky down on my left hand, I play G. So it's a logical system that I put fingers down to go down the flute and I take fingers off to go up the flute. So Bohm, of course, had this, uh, this, this was the system that he had. It works. You don't have to have, because of the acoustically it works, you don't need to have a split E mechanism because the, it, it works acoustically. And it changed because when Bohm sort of travelled with the flute, he came to, to France and he was showing the flute to Louis Doris, who was Taffanel's teacher, mm. And Doris was trying to persuade players to, to take up the new, the new system, the new Bohem flute, you know, from a, a step up from their eight-key flute. But the one struggle that players had was the G, because on the eight-key flute, they were used to the closed G-sharp flute. Um, and so Doris decided that he would try and persuade Louis Lott, who was one of the key makers in France, in Paris, to take the Bohm system, but change the open G-sharp to close G-sharp. Um, and so that's how it, be- that's how it began. It, it's all, that's, the Bohm system was taken on board by people, but not with the open G-sharp, which is a tragedy. It's a great shame. It's logical, it works beautifully, acoustically it works, and it's a superior system. I, of course, I'm biased. You're biased, and a lot of famous flute players, well-known flute players, play open G-sharp. But for the most of us, I would probably say 99.999% play on a different system, where you, your second finger, when you put down as a A, yep. the third finger you put down as a G, and then your pinky is G-sharp. So when you have to reverse those two, Initially, as it drives me actually potty, because I initially I can get it and then I forget and then it goes wrong. But when you get used to it, it's actually very, very easy. And your facility becomes much quicker as well, doesn't it? Well, I, I think so. I, I found that my technique got a lot better as a result. Now, there's no denying that it's confusing at start. Mm. But I remember when I changed, we might have spoken about this in one of our early one to ten podcasts <laughs> four years ago. I was at I was at college in Manchester, and I had um, can't quite remember now what my flute was at the time. Uh, Almeida. But it wasn't it's an Almeida, wasn't it? No, that was that. This was way before then. Oh. I had a um, I think I had a Yamaha. I went to college with a Yamaha flute, and I I think I stepped up to a Muramatsu. But then one day this another flute arrived in the class and it was it was one of William Bennett's he was selling a flute mm-hmm. and it was a Muramatsu with a I think it was a it was tuned by Albert Cooper mm-hmm. or re, had been retuned by Albert Cooper and it might have had a, a Cooper head joint can't quite remember now and it was it was just sitting there and it, it, someone was being interested in buying it and then decided they 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 couldn't buy it couldn't afford it or something so I started having a go on it now, for any of you out there who've ever tried one of Wibb's flutes, <laughs> there's something about Wibb's flutes that play differently. Mm. I don't know what it is, but something changes. It, I played this flute, and it was unbelievable. I, I just fell in love immediately. I could not put it down. And I just said, I have to have this flute. It's love at first sight. 
it was it played fantastically but it was the sound mm -hmm. incredible sound wonderful scale but it was open g sharp and of course i had no money so very kindly we said i could pay in installments and i borrowed lots of money from various people even my landlord heard me on the phone trying to get some money after someone and he said oh, i'll lend you some money i mean it was amazing so I, I borrowed lots of money, paid with, got this wonderful flute. I remember the second day I had to play in a flute class playing Schubert's Variations. Good grief. And I managed it, unbelievably. And two days later I had a concert and I also managed it. I had to, you, we, we were talking earlier on about conscious practice and subconscious mm. playing. It was conscious playing the whole time because <laughs> you have to really think very, very hard moved to the system very, very easily. There was one time, I remember a year later, when I was in a, in, in, a, in a master class and I was playing Prokofiev, and I suddenly couldn't play the top D because I couldn't remember whether my, little, my pinky was on or off. And I, I just got confused. That was the only, only time. Otherwise, it felt very, very natural. And of course, all my teaching has been teaching students with closed G sharp, and I can still pick up their flutes and play, mm -hmm. and then I go back to mine and play. But I have to have a little think be before I change but it feels a superior system it feels so much easier it flows it's logical fingers down to go down fingers up to go up and it frees up it frees up your technique have I have I sold it yet to you no I've thought them too long in the tooth but no absolutely I can just I, I pick one off the shelf and I'll occasionally give it a hoot and it quite quickly you get to grips with it but also quite quickly you suddenly if you think about what you're doing it goes wrong again but with the with a giveaway if we're going to do a giveaway i i, met, I forgot to go mention on. of course that the resonance of the flute is different because you've got another open hole true which is i think what bone wanted at, at the start more resonance yep. and there's less to go wrong mechan for, on the mechanism Mm -hmm. Just thought I'd throw that in. Uh, you're, yes, well, you're talking technical stuff now, which <laughs> tends to make me go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> um, so a lot of people will have, listening to the podcast, podcast well, obviously, obviously they have your own flute. I'm sorry, I'll keep on tapping the table. So if you're hearing, back, yeah, that's, that's now Claire doing it, because she has this very large, ornate table in it's this. It's not ornate. It's, it's absolutely simple. It's not. It's marble. It's 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 posh Italian marble. <laughs> I'm getting the eyes now. <laughs> no, it's not. It's it's a lovely white table, but I keep touching it. So apologies if you get the the knocking. And where was I then? I was just totally drifting, waffling. I was, I was drifting, waffling, which is my usual. We're going to. Oh yes. So a lot of people listening to. The, oh. <laughs> oh, it's a Monday. A lot of people listening to this will have their flutes because they're flute players. Otherwise, if they're trombone players, they wouldn't be listening to talking flutes, would they? I'm getting looked at again. <laughs> Sorry, everybody, I'm waffling. You'll also probably have a piccolo. There Not are also listeners that just listen for interest. Really? Uh, yes, and because I have friends who listen and might want to take the flute up. So this is their chance to get a flute. Doesn't it put them off? Listening to... I don't think so. It's probably my Jackie. one. It's probably my talking flute section <laughs> they get put off with. Anyway, a lot of you will have flutes. A lot of you will have piccolos. Some of you will have alto flutes. But not many of you will have an open G sharp. So should we give one of those away? I think that's a fantastic idea. Okay. So we're going to give one away to celebrate our 200th podcast. Do you think we'll ever get to 300? I don't know. Unless our listeners help us out here. <laughs> We might not. <laughs> no, no, we won't. So the process, I think let's make it nice and easy. Instead of having to send something in, let's just reward all those long-suffering listeners that have followed us on our Facebook page at Talking Flutes and our new Instagram page at Talking Flutes. So all those people, all those people that follow us on Talking Flutes at, on Facebook on the 1st of March and all those that follow us on Talking Flutes on Instagram on the 1st of March will go into a random generator draw. Sounds good. So if you're following us on both, you'll have two entries. 
and if you're following us on one, you'll have one entry. And it'll be a random generator. And one person will get the flute. I think I'll enter. <laughs> you can just ask if you can. Can I have one? <laughs> and send one down. So let's make it nice and simple, because some people have been following us on Talking Flutes on Facebook for a long time. For four years. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, somebody could just suddenly sign up today and win it, but it's random. I remember this is not some sort of gadget. No, it's not a gadget. This is a bona fide, fabulously made flute mm. with a much better system that might change your viewpoint on the system. And of course, any closed G-sharp flute can be changed to an open G-sharp flute. Yes, it can, yeah. So I said it can free up your technique uh, your technique definitely improves as a result. Yeah, it may drive you potty, but it's, it's, it's quite fun. It's quite a fun potty, because when we've had these at NFA to get younger people to play them, mm. it's, it's, it's quite funny to see the wonderment in their eyes, mm. because that third finger and the, on your left hand and the pinky, mm. we're so accustomed to putting them down in a certain way, but then yeah. when you've got to reverse it, mm. but when you get used to reversing it, yeah, it becomes wonderful. I, I must tell you another story. So when I was a student, there was advertised this class in London at the Wigmore Hall with Sir James Galway, mm-hmm. and so you had to send in, you had to send a, a tape to audition to get on. And I was very lucky to be one of the, oh, I think there were eight of us, maybe maybe ten of us to be picked. I was the only one from the UK, and we were each given a piece to perform in the afternoon in a masterclass. And in the morning, it was just, just the the flutes. It was all it was all recorded and televised, but the afternoon was the big televised masterclass. Mm-hmm. So the morning was without piano. It was just flutes with Sir James, and I got up to play, and I played whatever it was I played. I, I can't remember the piece now. But after I finished playing, he said something like, "What are you doing?" And I thought, "Oh heck, have I done something terribly <laughs> wrong?" And he took my flute off of me, which was open G sharp. And then he played Flight of the Bumblebee and said, oh, I understand, and then gave me my flute back. Hang on a second, hang on a second. He, pl- he, he, he played my open G sharp flute, played Flight of the Bumblebee, said, oh, I get it, passed it back to me. Nobody else in the room knew what he'd just done. I knew what he'd done. It was phenomenal. Wow, the yes, genius that is Sir James. He's a, he's a genius. It's not impossible. Nor should it be. No, no. And it's, I said it's a really, really good system, the original Boehm system. And you don't need all these gadgets like split E's or the little... Uh, oh, the, the donut. The donut you put in. Your top register works perfectly. Uh, because it's all sprung open, your fingers all feel even. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So Claire, you probably gather, Claire is very passionate about this, as is our technical director, David. So let's give one away. Let's give one that anybody that's following us on those two, Talking Flutes on Facebook and Talking Flutes on Instagram. And good luck to everyone. Um, yes. You know, you'll, you'll love it. Super flute. And Claire says it will transform your flute playing. It will. Yeah. <laughs> right, Claire. Should we finish? Yep, I think it's a good place to good place to finish. Quite an epic epic day. Two hundred podcasts. Two hundred. Looking forward to the next few. Yeah, two hundred. It's, it's 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 strange, isn't it? And please send in your ideas. Our email address. Oh yes, well done. Flutepodcasts at gmail dot com. Mm-hmm. We always want to hear your views, comments, ideas. Please send them in. And please rate and like us on whatever podcast provider you're listening to this on because it helps the weird algorithms put Talking Flutes higher up the search engine. So, yeah, please help us out on that. And I think we're done. Pete's gone quiet. Pete's now lying down. Yep, it's very quiet here. Thanks for coming down, John Paul. Oh, it's, it's my pleasure, my pleasure. And good luck, everybody, on the, the giveaway. Yep. And please help us out. It's like having, having to sit down and come up with 200 topics you're going to talk about. And I think people would find it quite easy to get to 17, 18, 19. Believe me, when you get to 200, when you're trying to think, now what am I going to do afterwards? That's mightily hard. It's very, very hard. So 
Thanks for listening, everyone. Yeah, thank you, thank you. And I'm back next week, I think, Claire. Yes, you are back next week. I'm back next week. I think, I believe, I'm with the mad Josh Johnson. I'm not sure, but um, I'll check the schedule and come back to everybody. But, yep, we're up again again in a couple of weeks, aren't we? Yeah. Bye for now. Bye, everybody. Bye. Talking Flutes and Talking Flutes Extra are podcast productions by the Trevor James Flute Company. For more information, visit trevorjamesflutes.com.